How does history remember one of the world's longest serving foreign ministers who brazenly defended apartheid against what the world had labeled a crime against humanity? We are not going to accept one man, one vote. It means our destruction. We will not accept it now, not tomorrow, never ever. Rolf Frederick Pick Boerter was bred in a conservative Afrikaner family. Like many national party leaders, he played rugby, was the head of the Fortrekkers, the Afrikaans' alternative to Boy Scouts, and studied law. Marinated in Afrikaner history and national party politics, Pick Boerter's outgoing personality and superb debating skills led to his meteoric rise within the ranks of the national party and into its diplomatic core. At the young age of 42, Pick Puerta was holding down two foreign positions. He was ambassador to the United Nations in New York and also doubled as South Africa's ambassador to Washington, D.C. After the countrywide uprisings of 1976, Prime Minister John Forster appointed Pick Puerta as foreign minister time when his Nationalist Party was brutally entrenching their apartheid system. We can do all that, I told President Carter, but there's one thing we cannot do, we shall not do, not now, not in 10 years, not in 100 years. We are not prepared to negotiate our own destruction. The more Pick defended his country abroad, the more he became the heartthrob of the National Party, with a band of fiercely loyal admirers who nicknamed him the Elvis of politics. Pick Porter's international exposure as a career diplomat slowly led him to a more enlightened stance. And by 1986, Pick made public his acceptance of the changing of the guard, stating that a black president was inevitable. A furious president, P.W. Porter, reprimanded his foreign minister in parliament and repudiated his claim. When Pick tried to escape the confines of apartheid dogma by forming his own National Democratic Party, he received overwhelming support. But instead, he decided to stay and to persuade his party from within. Nevertheless, there was fierce resistance from the right wing who taunted him with the epithet, the foreign minister of the National Party. Pick Water may have been called foreign within conservative South Africa, but his place in Southern African history is assured by his bold speeches, his behind the scenes negotiations, and his famous Bryside parallel diplomacy. His diplomatic finesse was essential in brokering a non-aggression pact with Mozambique, in ending South Africa's border war in Angola, and finally securing his long-held dream of the independence of Namibia. Southern Africa is like a zebra. You cannot put a bullet in the white stripe and think the animal will not die, it will die. A new era has begun. With the release of Nelson Mandela in 1990, Pick Porter could finally hold his head high amongst his international colleagues. At the first meeting of former enemies across the conference table, Porter was part of the team that orchestrated a peaceful end to white rule. And in 1994, Porter's 40 years as a flamboyant messenger between two warring worlds was finally brought to a resolution. Pick Porter became one of the few ministers who survived to serve in both the apartheid and the ANC governments.